predates the Internet times. In those days the computers were very big. Data exchange and software exchange happened on magnetic tapes. In the early 80s the first open source GIS systems appeared. One was the MOS system and the second one Grass GIS, which uh, is under continuous development. Interestingly, if you look at the Open Geospatial Consortium history, you can see that it derived from the Grass Interagency Steering Committee, which turned then into the Open Grass Foundation. In 2006, the OSGEO, the Open Source Geospatial Foundation, was fun founded in order to have an umbrella foundation for the various open source GIS projects out there. If we look at the timeline, we start in the early 80s with two systems or three, MOS, GRASS for GIS and the Projection 4 library for uh, reprojection which is used in different software projects even today. You can see two of those survived and they are continuously developed and then with the advent of civil internet things changed quite a bit. Having WWW available and also collaborative software development tools we can observe that from starting from 1995 a series of new projects have been established and developed. Virtual communities have been established and those were leading to these new software projects. In 2006 and 5 and 6 there was the discussion how to get this under a common hood and the idea was to uh, fund the open uh, OS Geo Open Source Geospatial Foundation. You can see from the logos that there are well-known projects among them also industrial players. As of today there are more than 18,000 unique subscribers in more than 150 topic-oriented mailing lists. It's a very intensive uh, exchange of ideas. How does the landscape of the Open Source Geospatial Foundation look like? In the first place there are the different projects which are related to web mapping, desktop applications, geospatial libraries, metadata, catalogs and all of them have steering committees to organize the related communities. But OSGEO is not only about software, it is also about public geodata, about education and community development. OSGEO itself is controlled by the charter members uh, who elect a board of directors. There is financial support from different sponsors, especially from industry. To acknowledge that uh, users want to speak their native language, a series of local chapters have been founded. And each year there are a series of conferences in different countries available. What are the offers of uh, FOS4G with respect to proprietary software? In this table you can see on the left side the different components from metadata catalogs to dedicated viewers, cartography tools, GIS analysis, handheld and mobile, web services and viewers, spatial databases, virtual globes and libraries. In the center column you find some proprietary products and on the right side you see a column of open source answers. You can see for each proprietary product there's at least one open source product available, often even several to choose from. At the page bottom you can see a more complete and detailed comparison which has been published as a scientific article. Between volunteer work there are also different means of gaining new developers. There is an important support from Google through the Google Summer of Code. Each year Google is donating more than 100,000 US dollars to OSGEO, which are then uh, given to a set of students. These students apply for a project in the different OSGEO projects and they suggest what software extension to develop. They have three months of time and if upon success they will receive 5,000 US dollars. In the past, this is already ongoing for several years, in the past many of the OSGEO projects have gained new software development tools, which means extensions, but also new developers because sometimes these students remain and become core developers. Besides software, geodata are very important. 
there's the OSGEO Geo Data Committee discussing public uh, data availability. Of course, the idea is to foster also in to enforce also in Europe the release of public geo data, and this is now slowly taking place. And happily, we can see that in these years, more and more geo data repositories are open to the public. The geo data committee aims at uh, generating a catalog, hopefully in the near future also with a, a metadata harvester. Another topic is education. It is very important to enable people to teach, not only to offer courses to end users, but also to enable more people to teach courses. And OSGEO is offering an educational content inventory in different languages. As of today, there are more than 60 tutorials and courses available, not only with slides, but also with the accompanying data sets. Like this, you can receive complete data sets in different languages and for different topics from this website. Besides online courses, there are, of course, books. Several books have been published in the last 10 years. Here you see a set of them. It is an incomplete list and they are addressing different topics like map servers, analyzing data, OpenStreetMap management, GRASS uh, GIS usage, and different approaches to geospatial data handling as well as uh, data analysis with R in terms of spatial data analysis. How can users obtain support? There are different possibilities, of course, through mailing lists and forums which are always online, but sometimes users seek uh, professional support from companies. There's a list of service providers available. Here you see the related web page on the OSGEO website. You can search for different countries, you can search by language and also by technology expertise. And finally, uh, there's a basement in academia because many